Okay. Pretty sure I I've been to Divinity's Reach. No, I haven't been to Divinity's Reach actually. But it's really easy to get there. All you have to do is go through one portal and then another portal. Yeah, but like Keith hasn't. He doesn't know where we're going, so I kind of have to explain it. But he's been to Lion's Ark. Yeah, he knows once. about the hub portals. You were expecting him to understand way too much. You've been playing with me too much. Now you're doing what I do. No, no. Okay. Well, first off, where are you guys? Are you guys in a different I'm instance? In, I'm in Lion's Ark. I'm waiting for you guys. Okay. Well, I'm going to be in Lion's Ark. I had to escape combat so I could travel. <laughs> yep. Yeah, I was just loading in and getting murdered. But yeah, the 999 series constantly gets dislikes because they don't like that we criticize the game and stuff like that. But at the yeah. same time, the it's like the most engagement I've ever had on any game on any game that is largely <laughs> about reading dialogue and story happening. Like if you if you look at all the CRPGs or or just uh, this is the first actual visual novel, but I've played like 20 games that are kind of visual novels where you're oh. pressing A to continue through dialogue for a very long time. But then eventually RPG combat breaks out or something like that, or Pyre or something. So out of all the different games that are comparable, this one has like the most engagement by Greetings. far, and like it's doing great. And it's continually one of my top shows, even though it's like 40 episodes in. It's like, well now, turns out re re in reality, despite the huge spike of dislikes and comments, the complaining people like this. Most people yeah. actually like this more, <laughs> apparently. Yeah. Well, isn't it just proportionate that the more views and likes on a video, the more people that would be willing to dislike or sort want of, to but like there, there are definitely like well, so the more negative you are or critical you are of a game, just baseline, you're going to get more, more dislikes, right even if you're time. completely correct. Yeah, uh, and that's just the way it always works. People cannot handle. I mean, I'm not, I'm not even going to claim that I'm one, have like some sort of 100% accuracy rate thing, but yeah, this is why tons of YouTubers are like, no pretend necessary. positive all the time. Because if you pretend to be super positive about everything all the time, even the stuff you don't like, and just pretend everything's great all the time, then you're never controversial. <laughs> In fact, people will literally like, look at my negative opinions on anything and they'll be like, we well, should be like this guy on the internet, he's got a million, billion, trillion subscribers and all he ever does is smile and talk in a high voice and be happy all the time, and I'm like, I hate looking and listening to this person. <laughs> they make me mad. Shit, I don't even know them. So no, I'm not going to be that person. <laughs> Which portal were we using? Uh, we're using the one that we're standing near. Yep. Uh, yep, because this is the one that goes to the human city. Like for me, uh, Red Letter Media's Nerd Crew parody podcast, like I'm the target demographic of that. Hmm. <laughs> Because it's so cathartic to see that mocked. The like, I'm basically a part of the PR arm of this company. Th that's my forced positivity. Star Wars. Have you ever, have you... No. What? What about Star Wars? Have you seen those yet, Wander? Uh, which ones? Sorry. The nerd crew. No. Like the the media I consume is few and far between. Uh, and I actually was surprised Can to see running for a moment? that there were other Plinket videos. Uh, the red, red Letter Media set up a thing... Oh, you didn't load in properly. That's red why letter, you were in Weird Armor. Red Letter Media set up a thing where they do, like, a fake podcast where they pretend to be one of those podcasts that's way too positive and, like, they're in, they have, like, a, vi a video set that's completely, like, drowned in, like, n like nerd culture merch and they're all wearing shirts and they're all f super positive and doing trailer analysis of something that won't come out for a year and stuff like that. They somehow managed to podcast ironically, which is I didn't think was a concept that could happen, but they found a way. Oh, is Keith just taking a little bit while? He might be in a different instance. A different instance? Ugh. Yeah, here. Uh, just right-click on him and join him. Okay. Am I in a different instance? Oh. Yeah. I, I, went, I, went up, I went up to do the, the uh, Vista, because I saw it. Well, I was like, sure, why not? Getting vistas are good. Yeah, that's the, that's the thing. This is a pretty extensive city, and yeah. there's a lot of stuff to grab in it if you want to complete the Divinity Reach zone. Uh, but, I see Wander. Yeah. Okay. So we're here. Uh, so if you press M to the uh, to the now. east, uh, to the east of us is an Asura Gate on the map. 
Uh, we have yeah. to get there. I don't know how to get there. It's yeah, it's in Rurikton. Yeah, it's so... over here. There are these hmm. watery portals that take you downstairs. Like, see the elevators? This guy gives you liquid karma. Yep. It's for turbo Buddhism. Turbo Buddhism. Oh yeah. You want to go? You want to go inject to the Nirvana? karma directly into your veins? Yeah, right into your eyeballs. Ew. It's like um. It's like prey, but with more dharma. Chat's asking when merch is coming. I uh, don't have merchandisable mottos or anything. <laughs> I mean, you could always just get a shirt with that dumb face I gave you. Yeah, like the main, the one thing I could do is basically like no, figure out you some sort of deal with have... Wander about like licensing like a weird I mean, if you shirt want license, with the art he made. If you want to just license, uh, use that art, I don't mind that much. We have a ton uh, you of Raven just, like, Man merchandise that I want to make, like, prints and buttons and fun stuff out of. What you could do is you could always just, like, uh, go out, find a good pic- uh, take a really good picture of some columnar jointing and just sell that on a shirt. <laughs> I mean, that, that, would be, that seems- uh, That would be an expensive trip. <laughs> hey, we have people all the good, already waiting All the good for spots us. are not easy to get to, and also extensively photographed already. True. But then you wouldn't have to worry about the- the uh, copyright. But what about vectors? I mean, hmm. true. Aha. The gate you can just vector call and rejointing, and then it's every game ever. I, I am still slowly working on like a really ex just pointless collection of screenshots of movies, shows, and video games I encounter with column rejointing in them. I feel like <laughs> when you're done with that, you should just have like a, a long, sad sounding video just showing <laughs> off every. Vi Every In the arms jointing. of yeah, exactly. an now, angel. Now, this is this is an odd question. I mean, I, what is columnar jointing? It's those like he hexagonal rock <laughs> pillars. Did I explain uh, this when I made the guild? Pillars? In this you explained this to Bird and I yeah, a I couple days I ago, but I never. I, I didn't re-explain it in this playthrough when I made the guild. No, you never. It. You never did. People just always accept that you are a columnar jointing man, and that it's apparently <laughs> a thing. Okay, so what is it? Is it a so type do you of know, rock? Do you know what mud cracks are? Yeah. Where it's like you just have these weirdly like hexagonal looking like mostly equal shaped cracks in the mud as it dries. Like that yeah. that happens because when the mud dries, it constricts. Mm -hmm. Like it's more yeah, it shrinks. It's larger when it's wet and it shrinks when it's dry. And so it, it's all fused as one solid piece, but it's getting shorter. It's getting smaller so par so it has to oh, somehow hey. maintain the same area wanna... while... Let's uh, see if we can run over to that Bloodstone Beast. Well, what about this lady? She needs to be... Oh, Shell. Event? Mind. Where is the beast? This is an event. It's over on the right. Oh, This well. lady's an event, too. Okay. Come with me. I'm going to see if I can get over to the Bloodstone... Uh, uh, we don't even event. know where the Bloodstone Beast is. So the, uh, oof, that is distance. I'll see if I can make it. Um... Wait, is it inside the city? No, the blood. Well, the escort is bringing you up oh. north. She was just going to her waypoint because she breaks weird. Wait, um, so are we sticking with her or are we going to the beast? I'm huh? heading for the beast. It gives way better shit. Okay. Bye. Yeah, I mean, you guys, you guys can do what you want. You have self determination. I was just I'll protect the fair lady, I guess. <laughs> right. Now there's more people with dresses yelling. Oh, this is a level 34 mission. I'll be fine, or in horrible danger. What's the level range of this zone? Uh, th 30, 30 to 40. 40. Oh. Wait, I thought we were specifically not doing zones I that shall... were too high. I mean, you're 33, so as long as we keep to the southern section, you're fine. If you run all the way to the north, the less fine. Oh. I thought that this was a good zone because it was in the middle. Ow. Yeah. If you actually, uh, gather materials as you go buy them, it should be decent. Actually, there was a heart for the entire city as well. Yeah. There we go. So, mud cracks form because when it's drying, it constricts, and then it, like, it, it ends up cracking in geometric patterns because that's just the equidistant... Uh, mm -hmm. st stress location between the two, between all the different directions it's pulling in at once. Yeah. So it, sh so it ends up fracturing in a really even pace. And, uh, 
column or jointing is actually the same idea, but for magma. You'll have a big uh. pool. You'll have a big pool of lava sitting there, and then as it as it uh, solidifies, it'll be constricting, and so it'll, it'll end up cracking in these like perfect shapes where it's really consistent. Is that how you get then, basalt? Because I love it. Uh, basalt is the most common form of magma. Period, and it's not. It's not. Columnar jointing is a way that something solidifies. Basalt is just a chemical composition of a rock. Okay, because they just make beautiful hexagonal columns. Yeah, but that doesn't have anything to do with it being basalt. Okay. So columns are often made of basalt because most magma is. Uh, most volcanic rock is often basalt constantly. In, almost the entire ocean floor is basalt. <laughs> uh, but. Whoa, this is a huge. It doesn't scorpion. have to form columns at all. And so when we get the when we get the vertical columns that you see, uh, that stuff you get that because it has to form in a pool that has to erode away over time. Otherwise, you'd only see it from the top, and it would just look like cracks, as opposed to those big vertical columns that form naturally. And are now and the reason I keep bringing it up is because it shows up in every single video game now. <laughs> I mean, like it's a, it's like kind of realistic fantasy looking stuff. Is what does that? Not much. Yeah, we talked about it a few times where like it's a, it looks fantastical, but it happens in real life. So there's a real life inspiration for it, and it's also very easy to model because it's just hexagonal shapes. So it's oh, easy, yeah. it's an easy thing to put in your video game. Oh yeah. So between Hexagons all those are... things, at some point someone just got the memo and put it in every game. It's like bioluminescent mushrooms and fireflies and fun stuff. The first time I really explicitly noticed it was in a uh, Dragon Age Inquisition because the Storm Coast is like explicitly named it's explicitly based on that one uh coastline in ireland that's just covered in the basalt columns yep uh yep, yep. but uh before long i started noticing it in another game like every two weeks for years now one of my earliest experiences seeing it was actually in miss three there's an age that has that everywhere Whoop. oh hey we got it bloodstone harvest Yep, was worth Got some goodies. Uh, did you finish your escort quest, Keith? Or are you still going? Nope, it's still going. Wow. Well, I guess we might as well teleport over and run north and help him. Okay. So how are we gonna? I guess we're not completing this zone. Uh, we can we potentially, can. but we'll be too low level. We'll see. They kind of varies. So I've I'm noticed, already at level 34. I've noticed experience varies very, very distinctly based on um, based on where you are. Uh, Diesa Plateau kind of sucked because there were a lot of hearts that involved specifically doing nothing. Um, you know, it was like feed the cows or or run the cow race or like, you know, be nice to cows. Uh, I may have a long Be memory nice for to cows. dumb <laughs> shit. Anyway, I wonder uh, has a somewhat biased memory of what was happening that day. That's like the last half hour <laughs> was just nothing but cows, and it was cows it was annoying. Um, but so, uh, uh, so this area is much more combat focused for the most part, and so you get a lot more exp, uh, and the events tend to be a lot faster too. It's too bad golden moas aren't tameable, as far as I remember. Uh, no. I, th I think you can get most of the moas. Yeah, but I don't believe you can get golden moas. Are you specifically on a mission to collect every moa? Nah. No, I mean, she's I, just on I, a mission I, I to collect moa. I currently have the black moa with the spikes, but I think there's also red, blue, green. Except the red one might be called crimson. Greetings. Actually, where is he? Oh, I completely passed you. Okay. <laughs> Going back. I was just following the road. But you guys went off track. So easy to do. Oh, but I see Wait, you in the are distance. Are there two? Oh, crap. There's like multiple... There's kind of multiple events nearby? Yeah, because there's... Uh, the giant wasp wasps and such? Yeah. I was going to run over and help that because it looks like it's kicking whomever's ass. 
Oh yeah, it's like two poor people fighting this. And one of them forgot the cardinal rule of pick pick people up. It gets so much easier. I was playing some of the end game content, and it is magic seeing just how different this game is on like maximum level. It's just like, nope, we don't have time to pick you up. Run back. Mm -hmm. Lazy sods, and people are like actually mad about it. It's like, nope, we, like literally can't pick you up. We have to keep running. Everything's on fire. Everything's on fire. Yeah, we're I'm trying, uh, I'm trying to imagine like doing like like do uh. Yeah, if, if, if in Molten them, Core you had to like manually pick people up by slowly crouching by them when like there's constant danger zones happening and stuff. Well, that's more or less what it was, sort of. So there were constant enemy spawning, so you had to run in a circular fashion around the map, uh, uh, in, like clockwise, though that doesn't really matter. Uh, but you had to kill these healers before they'd spawn because they'd respawn uh, shields on the mini boss. And if too many shields respawned, the mini boss would go back up to full health and you'd have to reset the entire thing. And so it like it felt like I was playing a raid with just like a hundred random people I'd never met before. Which is fascinating. Ow. Another big wasp. Hey, she has arrived. Okay, now the wasp problem. You're down? Yeah. I'm not invincible. I barely even understand this character. <laughs> <laughs> so like, Ready normally with uh, Guild Wars, uh, with Guild Wars, you have like your weapons and you have your your abilities, and you can kind of mix and match your abilities. But all of my abilities are are tied to like specific people, so I only have like uh, certain abilities per. Uh, per, like, important person, so I've got, like, the dwarf abilities, the demon abilities, the centaur abilities, and stuff like that. And you can only equip them as a set, so it gets really confusing, to me at least, because it's just like, oh, I have a new set to mess around with, let's There's see what it does. There's barely any customization with yeah. reference. Yeah I, don't, yeah, I don't think I understood any of that. Yeah. Uh, what it was is, like, there were, you're essentially like a ritualist, except instead of summoning spirits, you're actually becoming like the shaman king and shoving a spirit. Uh, you don't yeah, shove yeah a I guess it more or less is shaman king, and it's like, okay, so my my uh, my, my spirit's going to be the dwarf now, and he's got very specific abilities. Yeah, and you can switch between two spirits freely, but they have a set healing and seven, eight, nine elite abilities. Like you can't customize them. So many bags. <laughs> Isn't the next expansion coming out soon? Way too soon for us to probably finish. Yeah, it's this coming in time. out. In, uh, it's coming out in two weeks. Uh, Jeez. Yeah. Uh, I had a minor heart attack because I thought I thought that Destiny came out like. Well, today, it did. Just but, not for but, us. But like not on PC. No. I would be bugging you about it if if uh, if it had come out, but no. We got we got some time. We don't have to worry about it. Like how are we gonna? I'm I'm like freaked out of like how are we gonna juggle this and destiny and divinity uh yeah play them different days <laughs> of the week <laughs> well i mean you could always dedicate uh one of your actual slots to a multiplayer thing for once i mean my plan is to dedicate that to uh divinity yeah that's what i was kind of expecting the issue is that i'll just be in the middle of shit <laughs> that isn't now, done now they and finally in order to added... dedicate a slot to one of those games, I'd have to cancel those games. Well, didn't you have? Oh else. wait, no. But you started. Uh, you started Mario and Rabbids today to fill the slot yeah. for fire. That's a good game, by the way. Yep. I like. I beat it two nights ago, and through and through, it was just consistently a really so satisfying experience. We have human delegation. There's another heart over here. I suppose I'll do the heart that's close to where you guys are. Yeah, I'm just beating up wasps. wasps. <laughs> I gained a level because I apparently had a, a tome of experience. Yeah, yeah, you can get tomes of experience. Uh, you get them from logging in. Just use them. I have a billion. I wish they were tradable to friends or something because, like, I have... I have, I think, seven tomes of experience at this point, and I can only use them on one character. This one. Wait, there's which... a suspicious rat here? 
Yeah. No, this entire area is filled with like it's uh trained rat for spies. reconnaissance? Yeah. Yeah, there's rat spies everywhere. It's What do you do to so, them? Nothing as far as I can tell. You might be able to deal with them, but I'm just imagining them training their rats to somehow communicate stuff back to them. I don't yeah, understand. Ah, I just ran past another NPC <coughs> voiced by, uh, what's his face? Mercer. Yeah, Matt Mercer. He is everywhere. I found I found a random NPC that's voiced by him in uh, Persona 5. And I was like, no, stop. You're already in my party. I don't need more of you. On the rat subject, I mean, this is the world where there's sentient rat people. Yeah, it's, it's true. See, by the way, uh, Keith, is your gear starting to get outdated? I don't know how to tell. Oh. And, uh, it's based on level. Just I'm gen I'm generally just desperately sprinting around and trying to keep up with what's going on, and then Fair sometimes enough. I click on stuff that has green numbers on them. Yep. Um. So and then if everyone yells at me because I'm like trying to navigate it via the inventory bags, but you're supposed to net change your gear by via your hero screen, where it shows uh, by category. Both are acceptable, but um, the heart, that big golden heart sells uh, up to date uh, gear for the level. So like uh, that guy sells level thirty five armor, I think boots and gloves. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but it's a uh, it's a good way of keeping your gear up to date without spending money because it's karma. Isn't oh, yeah. karma also just money? Uh. It's another form of currency. Yeah, yeah, except for like you. Uh, so the thing is, you can't profit from karma in this game. Karma is is purely for buying from like stuff like that. There are like things that you use karma for later, um, but you can't generally convert it into something that you make cash from. Um, and so, I mean, were you were you planning on making money off this game? Besides no, no. Videos, I, I mean, mean, I mean, like in-game gold, because eventually you're going to need a whole lot of in-game gold for better items and. Stuff like that, which you probably you don't just get mostly don't care about. Uh, it's hard to get the really good shit. You know, it's the it's the standard MMO thing. Like, huh. if you want to get, if you want to get the really nice stuff, you have to. Was that you? No, I'm used, I to, the, I'm used to the WoW experience, which is where money is basically useless. No money, money like, in this game. The economy in this game is actually really strong and totally worth something. Like in WoW, you can use it to buy a bunch of like twink gear to make your like characters better while you're leveling them, and you can use it to buy bags and like gem slots and stuff like that. But then once you hit max level, you're only really using it for repairs and for buying like consumables that give you buffs over time because all of the actual gear is is bind on pickup drops from bosses. No, uh, stuff is actually like very useful here. Or at least that's my ex that's before somebody corrects me, that's my experience based on Burning Crusade so, rating from like there, many years ago now. There is kind of that experience. Uh, you can farm for dungeon exotics, um, but you're better off just making the money and then selling it. Um, so like so uh, this past weekend I was playing because I was just kind of catatonic and um I think it cost me 40 gold to gear out two characters uh, with most of, like, their best-in-slot stuff. There is, like, higher best-in-slot, but it's more work than it's worth 90% of the time. Um, but, yeah, money is money is very much worth uh, in this game. You can't just, like, run a dungeon and get more or less best-in-slot. You actually would either have to farm the dungeon or go to fractals, which I've never actually bothered with because I don't know... Fractals? I don't know how to do fractals. fractals and... Yeah, so fractals are mini dungeons. You run five of them, um, and after five, you get like a specific reward. Um, I'm, I'm like mathematically derived vector work. Huh. <laughs> uh, it's, it's 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 they mix a up it up like yes. you never f have the same exact dungeon. So like a dungeon might take you about an hour. A fractal generally takes ten to twenty minutes, give or take. Um, it sounds kind of like one. When Diablo 3 added its, its like, quest or adventure mode or whatever, where instead of playing through the actual campaign, you would do, like, weird micro-missions where it just throw you in a random location against random enemies to do a random objective or something? Kind of, yeah. 
Um, they're fun though, and some of them are really cool. Like, there's one where you're literally just climbing this, like, statue and fighting your way up. Uh, and it's, like, a really nice visual thing. It's taking me ages to complete this heart. Like, I found some yeah. separatists, but... It looks like level 40 is the unlock point for the next personal chapter, so that might as well be when we get do the, uh... Yeah. That, might as, well, that, that might as well be when we do the next thing. I believe oh, that also gets us access. Yeah. Wait, uh, what? How did I, you Jesus. I, I cooked. <laughs> I just crafted. But Holy you're, crap. You're not supposed to do that. I, I just crafted some food. Using stuff I had on hand at the end of the, like, last session. Or was it the session before? It is mad easy to level in this game if you're not playing it normally. I haven't looked for the crafting menu yet to be honest uh, you actually you have to go you have to go into town to do it or actually here uh, there there are crafting places near the portal we came in just keep on uh, gathering logs and mining and everything like anytime you can gather from a spot just gather it gives you exp anyway oh, so you oh guys we started the session the being level 33 and I'm already level 35 yeah this place is faster from my... Nah, it's because it's of the experience tome. <laughs> oh. But it well, still feels novel to suddenly have such a higher level so fast. We're like not even half an hour in. Kill separatists, rally to the soldiers, and train with the troops. But yeah, if you want to gain 10, uh, 10 levels, maxing out any crafting discipline usually isn't that expensive either. I guess it depends on the crafting discipline. It's really easy to get jewelry crafting At that up. point, can you just dump that crafting menu, uh, that crafting thing and just pick up another one immediately and then yeah. max level again? No, you can, you can hit ma max level by maxing every single crafting discipline. You don't you actually have to, you ever have to, have to, have to leave pick the city. disciplines, or can you just get all of them? You can have two you at a can time. You have so many active. Um, and it costs you a small fee to switch back to a crafting discipline. But yeah, you could just repeatedly dump them, uh, pick a new one, and move on. And eat. so, if you go back to the old one, you have the same experience. I yeah. Think so yeah. yeah, it doesn't go away. It just. You can also buy more licenses to use more. Yes. But not really worth it. Well, oh, so it's another free-to-play system. I'm, yeah. I'm so also holic -y, though. I already have enough people to learn each of them. Yeah, I've I've got I've got four maxed out cooks because cooking is so cheap to level. I've never leveled cooking. It is actually probably you the to, hardest to level because you have to look up like you have to the look hell up a guide the for it because there's just too many combinations of things. Whereas jewelry making is very straightforward. Because with jewelry making, it's like, I'm working in copper, now I'm working in silver, now I'm working in gold, now I'm working in platinum. And then each of them have a set number of stones that you can use with them. How'd you get up to that vista? Did you, like, go around on the western side, or...? I don't even know who got up to this vista. Oh. Which one? It's actually a lot easier. Never mind, oh, found that it. one? Yeah, that one. Yeah. There was just a, a straight-up ledge led to it. Oh. I'm just, I guess I'm just climbing the hill. Originally, they said they might add, like, actual climbing, like you could climb trees in this game. Uh, and they were announcing that well before, uh, well before the game came out. I was so excited for that, and then they didn't do it, and I was sad. I want an MMO that just plays like Breath of the Wild. <laughs> I just want, I just want to play Breath of the Wild with people. Isn't that what EverQuest X was going to go for? Yeah, and then... Isn't that kind of what Dragon, uh, Dragon Dragon's Dogma Online is? I have no idea, actually. It, people have been telling us that we should look into that game. But it's not in the US. No, you have to do the same stuff you do with uh, uh, the Fantasy Star or whatever number that, that, that they're on. That is such where you, where you awkward experience. Like, you have to, like, fan patch it so, you, that, so that's translated. The... Mo I, I was, so starting Dauntless, a lot of people were like, you should play uh, Monster Hunter Online. I'm like, that sounds like a giant pain uh -huh. in the ass. I think for Fantasy Star, whatever number, you have to like, I think for that one, you have to use like a VPN to play it. Yeah. But I think for Dragon's Dogma, you just need to use, I don't remember if you have to like use a Japanese address or something or... Mm. I don't know what it, what was involved, but it's supposedly it's easier than the other MMOs to get into as an as an American. 
for a non-Japanese person. But yeah, Dragon's Dogma seemed like it'd be fun in multiplayer. And that's a whole weird thing. It's so weird that that game is not westernized. Because it's like explicitly... Yeah. It's so explicitly like their super western influenced uh, <laughs> Capcom property. It's like, we're going to make like a western fantasy RPG. And then we're going to make an MMO sequel to it. And it's going to only be in Japan. What? <laughs> it's like if Dark Souls never came to, to English speaking countries. I'm like, but isn't that the target demo? I don't remember Japan being super into those demographics usually. They, those games usually do less well over there. I'm actually kind of curious about that. Uh, like, I get, I get Fantasy Star not coming to to us more than I get Dragon's Dogma not having its, its MMO come here. And it's been like over two years now, I think. They even brought they even brought out a remake of Dragon's Dogma to PC like a year, year and a half ago. That Their was... MMO isn't worth bringing here for some reason. That was a decent game, but man, could I not get into the, like, uh, quest setup. It just kind of felt like a slog every time I had to do anything other than plot stuff. I guess I just have trouble with, like, westernized long RPGs, because there's so many side objectives that I just have no interest in. Yeah. Dragon's Dogma was pretty short. It felt like you were playing it forever, though. Like... I stopped playing it, you kept going for like two months. Yeah. There's uh well there's also an expansion to it, but also there's the just a thing where like you reminder of you generally expect playthroughs to be shorter because you would like you know, for a lot of games you kind of binge through them in like a week. True. And then they just come out gradually. Whereas I'm I'm often am kind of neck and neck more with my release schedule. Yeah, I've got I've got about a month's content's worth of uh Mario and Rabbids now because I just played yeah. it. <laughs> so you beat, it, you beat it before I even started playing it, I think. It is actually super handy, though. Cause now, one of you I yeah, see I all, right now. all the way up northwest. And yeah, I'd be down south. for actually meeting up. The murder horde is kind of lighter the higher we we get up in levels. So, but uh, I just checked with the expansion and everything. My Dragon's Dogma series was 57 episodes. Okay, that's not so bad. And a decent oh. chunk of that's the expansion. Ultimately, that game would have been so much better if the supporting characters were just other people. Yeah, they have a whole pawn system where you bring in, like, basically, like, character creator characters as yeah. your, as all your co-op friends. And I'm like, you know, there's a reason why your party members are, like, characters in most games is because there's people to go on the adventure with as opposed to some random faceless pawns that kind of shout the same thing over and over again. It's like, you can bring in your friends' pawns from their games. And it's like, cool, another basically identical character as far as actual delivery of lines and behavior goes. But this one has a sword and shield, and that one has a staff, and they use different... Like That, that's, that, that was the only difference between them, was that they would be different schools of characterness, but not... Uh, they still weren't people. Mm. Okay, so... Uh... You guys want to actually head my direction? There is yeah. a, um, there's apparently a substantial jumping puzzle in this general area oh, okay. that my fans have found and would really like us to um, go to. 